sister station, WTBS, presents in stereo, America's team, the Atlanta Braves. Atlanta Braves baseball is brought to you by Bush Beer, the beer with a taste as smooth as its name. By Delta Airlines, serving more than 100 cities in the U.S. and overseas. Delta gets you there. By your Toyota dealer and the luxurious all-new 1985 Cressida. Indulge yourself with the works. By Canon, quality cameras and photographic equipment. So advanced, Canon is the world's leader in 35-millimeter photography. By CNN, the world's most important network. And by Headline News, around the world every 30 minutes. Hi, everybody. Along with John Sterling, this is Pete Van Weeren welcoming you to Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, where tonight the Braves wrap up a homestand, final game of a three-game series with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Braves trying to win three games in a row, and it's been a while since we've been able to say that. Two very dramatic victories, John. One-run victories over the Pirates, both last night and the night before. Yeah, I know the Braves aren't going to feel sorry for anyone, Pete, but last night the Pittsburgh Pirates had a 15-game losing streak on the road and carried a 6-2 lead into the bottom of the ninth. But base hits by Claudel Washington and Rafael Ramirez whittled the Pirate lead to 6-4. to four. And With two outs, there were two Braves on base, and Don Robinson faced Bob Horner. Here's the call of Pete Van Weeren as Horner stands in. And the 1-0 pitch. Deep to left center field. Back goes Orsalak, and the Braves have won it. Bob Horner strikes for a three-run homer in the bottom half of the ninth inning. And the Braves come off the deck, scoring seven runs, five of them in the bottom of the ninth. Atlanta wins it, seven to six. What a finish. Well, a terrific call and a no doubt about it, dramatic three-run home run in the bottom of the ninth with two out to win. That's by far the best Braves win of the year. A little bit of sunshine breaking through the clouds of this Braves season. And tonight, Len Barker pitches for the Braves and Lee Tunnel for the Pirates. The Braves try to make it three in a row and Pete, and maybe they can do it. Maybe they can get something started. Bobby Wine undefeated so far as a Braves manager. We'll see if his string continues. We'll be back with all the action right after this. Okay, Braves and Pirates. Final game of the homestand and of this series as well. Then the Braves... Hit the Brooks and go to Chicago for four. We'll be on tomorrow afternoon and Friday afternoon, Saturday and Sunday afternoon. Then the Braves move on and go to Pittsburgh and St. Louis. Here's the lineup for Chuck Tanis Pirates, who have now lost 16 straight on the road and will try to break that awful skein tonight. Joe Orsalak leads off in center field. Johnny Ray bats second at second base. Bill Madlock hits third at third base. Jason Thompson had a big three-run home run last night. He bats cleanup at first. Hitting fifth, the young right fielder obtained from the Angels, Mike Brown. Batting sixth behind the plate, Tony Pena. Hitting seventh, Denny Gonzalez in left field. The rookie shortstop, Sammy Khalifa, bats eighth. And pitching and batting ninth, Lee Tunnel. Tunnel was sent down to Hawaii during the middle of the year. He has had an awful season. His record, 1-8, and an ERA of 3.80. When he's right, pretty good pitcher. Now for the Braves. Trying to make it three in a row under the stewardship of Bobby Wine. Bill Thompson leads off in right field. Rafael Ramirez bats second at short. Dale Murphy is third in center field. And the hero of last night, Bob Horner, bats fourth at first base. Hitting fifth in left field, Terry Harper. Batting sixth at third base, Ken Obertfeld. Glenn Hubbard plays second base, bats seventh. Bruce Benedict behind the plate. And it's the first time in a long time he's caught three games in a row. So Benny behind the plate, batting eighth. And pitching in batting ninth, Len Barker. Barker has had his troubles this year, very much like Tunnel. He's been on the DL a couple of times. Barker, a record of 1-6 and six and a very high ERA of 6.21. He's trying to get something started before the year is over. Now the umpires. Behind home plate, Bob Engel. At first base, Dave Ballone. At second base, the rookie umpire of the quartet, Tom Hallian. And Jim Quick at third base. Chief Nakahoma has yet to make his dash to his roost in left field. He'll do that soon, and the Braves will take the field, and we'll have baseball action at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. A very warm, but a very nice evening in Atlanta, and hopefully the rain that was forecast will stay away. 
The Pirates are in dead last place. As you look at Chuck Tanner, who always has a smile on his face, he is an amazing guy. He is Mr. Optimist, Chuck Tanner. Anyway, the Pirates in last place, a record of 39 and 83, 37 and a half games out. And the Braves in fifth place in the West, 52 and 71, and they're 22 games out. There was a game played today and a very important game in the American League. Minnesota beat Toronto 6-5. So the Blue Jays lost. The Yankees do not play. And Toronto's lead over New York is cut to four and a half games and only three in the loss column. In the American League West, California leads Kansas City by two and a half, but only by one in the loss column. Oakland is still in it. They're six games out, six back on the loss side. Over in the National League, there was one game played this afternoon. Houston shut out the Chicago Cubs 3-0. Nolan Ryan won it. That's the first win that Nolan's had in a long time. Jeff Heathcott got the save in that ball game, and rookie right-handed Jay Baller lost it for the Cubs. Houston a 3-0 winner, and the Astros have about a four-and-a-half game lead over the Braves in the battle for fourth place in the National League West. The other game in the National League will be tonight. St. Louis will play in Cincinnati. And a heck of a pitching matchup. Joaquin Andujar goes for the cards, and Mario Soto will pitch for the Reds. In the National League pennant races, the Cardinals lead the Mets by three games and four on the loss side in the National League East. Montreal just about out of it. They're nine and a half out, and they're 11 back in the loss column. In the National League West, Los Angeles leads San Diego by seven and a half games and nine on the loss side. And Cincinnati just about out of it. They're 10 games out, but they are also 10 games back in the loss column behind the Los Angeles Dodgers. But you saw the Braves defensively, no changes from the lineup that Bobby Wine has trotted out the past two nights. And really the interesting story for Braves fans will be the appearance and pitching of Len Barker. You know, the Braves, once they hit September, and September 1st, I believe, is Sunday. I might be wrong on that, but it's coming up in the next few days. It is Sunday. Now, the Braves probably will reactivate Zane Smith. Sooner or later, they're going to have to start Zane Smith, who figures to be the lefty in the rotation. They're also going to have to start Pasquale Perez, Craig McMurtry. Those are young pitchers, and you only can start so many pitchers. The Braves have about seven who have been starting pitchers this year. And for Len Barker, he's admitted that this season has been a total frustration for him. That's why he got involved with that umpire on in his last start, which I believe was Saturday night against the Cardinals. In fact, Len Barker has volunteered to go to either the Rookie Instructional League or Winter Ball to try to get some rhythm going for next season. Barker says his arm is okay, that his elbow is okay. At times, he looks overpowering. He'll pitch overpowering for an inning or two. And then he'll run into trouble, especially control troubles, have to groove one and really get hurt. And this year has been just awful for Len Barker. In fact, I think we're going to put the managerial problems during the year of Eddie Haas to rest soon, but one thing you have to say about Eddie Haas, three pitchers who normally you would count on in the starting rotation for the Braves, three of your five starting pitchers, Craig McMurtry, Len Barker, and Pasquale Perez are a combined two and 17. I don't care who manages the ball club. You can't win if those three guys are going to be two and 17. Well, we're all set tonight. Let's see if the Braves can make it three in a row into Bobby Wine, or let's see if the Pirates can break that 16-game road losing streak. Joe Orsalak leads off of the Pirates, and leading off the broadcast, here's Pete. Thank you, John. Orsalak, a rookie center fielder, batting 291. He has no homers, 13 RBIs. He'll be followed by Johnny Ray and then Bill Madlock. And the first pitch of the afternoon on the way now from Len Barker. Taken low and inside, ball one. One thing to watch for when Barker pitches. On the days when he has been effective, he's been able to keep the ball down. If he's wild high, look out. Right side, Bob Horner has it. He'll take it himself, one down. One away in the top of the first, Johnny Ray will step in. Ray hitting 263 on the air with five homers and 44 RBIs. He had a good night for the Pirates in last night's ball game. Picked up three hits, two singles and a double. Mark 
Parker delivers a strike in the inside corner, 0-1. And the 0-1 coming. Missed low and inside. One ball, one strike. We'll be in Chicago tomorrow, the first of four, with the Cubs. Rick Mailer against Steve Trout tomorrow afternoon. Now the 1-1 coming. High in the air, shallow right center field. Hubbard back, Thompson in. It'll be Glenn Hubbard for out number two. Very quickly, the first two hitters retired in the top half of the first. And that'll bring up Bill Madlock. Madlock at 253 with 10 homers, 41 RBIs. Pirates just six games away from tying a major league record. The Pirates of 1890 and the Mets of 1963 lost 22 road games in a row. Pirates haven't won a road game since July 22nd. 16 straight losses since then away from Three Rivers. Up high to Madlock, ball one. And the 1-0 pitch drilled in the center field. That's a base hit for Madlock. So the Pirates have their first base runner. A two-out single by Madlock. Puts a runner at first. And brings up Jason Thompson. It was hitting 256 with 12 homers and 58 runs driven in. Hit a big three-run homer for the Pirates last night. At the time, it looked like it just about won the game for Pittsburgh. As it gave them a 5-1 to one lead, but the Braves rallied in the ninth for five runs to win it. <laughs> Nothing had won the count. Thompson... Not having one of his better years, but he always seems to hit the Braves well. He's had two of his 12 homers in this ballpark this year. Now the 0-1. Missing one ball, one strike. And I guess it's true that there are no current members of the Pirate team that were with them the last time they lost 22 road games in a row. Very unlikely. Mm hmm Although I'm sure some feel that they've been around that long when you're having a year like this. <laughs> Two and one, the count. Boy, a great pop quiz. Whose administration was that when the Irish lost 22 in a row in 1890? Hmm. McKinley? Was he in office then? I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> you got me on that one. <laughs> got me too. That's going to drop out of play. And the count two and two. Two men out. Madlock at first just underway. Top half of the first inning. Pittsburgh travels to Cincinnati from here for a series with the Reds. As we mentioned, the Braves open up a 10-game road trip in Chicago tomorrow. I'm really sorry I brought that up. Our AD Kenny Nolan is thinking he's starting to get a headache. <laughs> Here's the 2-2 pitch, and it misses high and away. Full count, 3-2. and two. Isn't it funny, at times like these, the truck gets very quiet. <laughs> Bill Madlock will be taking off on this 3-2 pitch. There he goes. The pitch to Thompson misses low, ball four. So the Pirates have put runners on at first and second with two outs, and they'll bring up their... Right fielder Mike Brown. No matter how bad a year a team is having, there are always some bright spots, and this is one of them for the Pirates this year. They just acquired this youngster about a month ago from the California Angels. And you can see he's done the job. He has a seven-game hitting streak. They feel he's going to be a true star in the National League. They feel he has the capability of being a 300 hitter with some power. Although he hasn't shown that power yet for the Pirates. Excellent defensive outfielder. Runs well. Up high, ball one. Two 
Thompson, the runner at first. Madlock at second with two outs. Here's the 1-0. It's high, 2-0. Barker starting to miss that strike zone high. When that happens, he usually runs into problems. That's what John was referring to when he talked about Barker trying to find his rhythm. His arm is fine. His arm has not bothered him the last few times he's pitched at all. He's just trying to get back in that groove. He hasn't been able to stay in a game long enough to really find it in his limited appearances this year. And he's high again, 3-0. One more bad one. They'd be loaded for Tony Pena. And a 3-0 offering taken for a strike, 3-1. the 3-1 delivery. Got the fastball by him. 3-2 to count. And again, the runners will be taking off on this payoff pitch with two outs. Thompson will leave first. Madlock from second. There they go, the 3-2, struck him out. Len Barker falling behind Brown, 3 and nothing, comes back to record his first strikeout, and the Pirates strand two in the top half of the first. We go to the bottom half with no score. We go to the bottom half of the first inning. There's a look at the Pirates defensively. Chuck Tanner sticking pretty much with a set lineup. In fact, it's been a set lineup throughout this series. On the mound for Pittsburgh tonight, right-hander Lee Tunnel. His record is not very good. One win, eight losses. His ERA not bad at 3.80. He's making his 16th start, his 17th appearance overall. One and one lifetime against Atlanta. You look at his numbers on the air, and they aren't that bad. 92 innings, 80 hits allowed, 37 walks, 46 strikeouts. He's having one of those seasons that a pitcher will have in a ball club that's not playing very well. You go out there and you pitch a good game, your team doesn't score any runs. If you go out and pitch badly, that seems to be the game when your team does score some runs, and you, you lose 8-7. to seven. But those kind of things seem to snowball when a team is on a downward roll. Milt Thompson leads off for Atlanta, hitting 323. No homers, three RBIs. That's a called strike going one. Tunnel also spent some time at Hawaii this year. He was four and one with the Pirates AAA club. He has a good arm, good fastball. Control sometimes a problem. Here's the 0-1. And that missed one and one. Tunnel's only 24 years old from Austin, Texas, 6'1", 180 pounds. Base hit to right for Mel Thompson. And the Braves are off to a good start in the bottom half of the first. So Thompson aboard with nobody out. Rafael Ramirez will step in. He's batting 270 with four home runs, 48 runs driven in. And Bobby Wine wants to play a running game. He's got Thompson, who has great speed at first, and a guy who can handle the bat and go to right field, Rafael Ramirez. So we'll see if the Braves try to straight steal or put on a hit and run. Some kind of game. The first base coach for the Braves, Clarence Jones, just signed on as first base coach for the ball club yesterday. He's been a minor league hitting instructor for the Braves the last couple of seasons. concerned about Thompson at first. He has a pretty good move for a right-hander. 
Thompson five out of six in the stolen base department since reporting to Atlanta in midseason. Pena loves to throw too. No score, bottom half of the first inning. A runner at first, nobody out, a count of one ball, no strikes on Ramirez. And now we'll have a meeting. Pena and Tunnel will talk it over. Bob Engel trying to speed things along here. He wants the baseball to examine. Rafael Ramirez is very suspicious that pitchers on the Pirates doctor the baseball in some way. The last couple of nights, a lot of the times when Ramirez has been to the plate, he has asked for the baseball to be looked at by the plate umpire, and many times it's been thrown out. Rafael last night was saying he's suspicious about Bob Walk, about several pitchers on the Pirates team. The pitch out, Thompson a pretty good jump, a pretty good throw though, got him. Sammy Khalifa put the tag on Mel Thompson. And for only the second time, he's caught stealing. You know, a guy has speed when you can pitch out and have an arm like Pena and just nip him. Let's see. Boy, he looks safe. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's not the right angle. And, but boy, he looks safe to me anyway. Here's the 2-0 grounded sharply toward short. Khalifa up and throwing. And there are two down. You might wonder what we mean by doctoring the baseball. Rafael Ramirez is very suspicious that guys like Bob Walk, Rick Roden, Lee Tunnel, some of these pirate pitchers are somehow scratching the ball, which makes a breaking ball break a little more, makes a fastball move a little more. Boy, that good old truck. We have geniuses in that truck downstairs. We lock the door to keep them in there. They say that the president in 1890, when the Pirates lost 16 straight on the road, was Benjamin Harrison. I mean, 22 on the road was Benjamin Harrison. They named a club after you, Benjamin, and <laughs> here in Atlanta. Good one, too. Here's Dale Murphy. Who takes a strike. Murphy, 293, leads the league in homers with 34, leads the league at RBIs with 91. And the 0-1 delivery. Breaking ball caught the inside corner. Nothing in two. Let's give name credit. It was Captain Hook. Richard Hook. CBS Master Control came up with Benjamin Harrison. Now my next question, uh, Richard. Was he any kin to William Henry Harrison? <laughs> and was he a pirate fan? That's yeah, the key. Yeah. Did he care? <laughs> Down on strikes, Dale Murphy, and that's all for Atlanta in the first. Tunnel records his first strikeout. Nothing doing for the Braves. At the end of one, we have no score. This telecast authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta Braves and intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. And any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Braves and the Turner Broadcasting System and Benjamin Harrison is prohibited. Top half of the second, Tony Pena leads it off for the Pirates. He's hitting 251 with seven homers and 40 RBIs. No score. Len Barker and Lee Tunnel each trying to turn their seasons around here tonight. Finish strong. All the way back to the screen, ball one. One American League final today. Minnesota beat Toronto 6-5. One final in the National League. Houston over the Cubs 3-0. A limited schedule tonight. One and one, the count on Pena. Now the one one coming. Let up, bounces up there. Two and one. Pirates overall on the road this year have had just a horrible time. They've won only 12 out of 58 games away from Pittsburgh. Ah! 
That caught the corner and the count even two and two. And now the 2-2 coming. Popped him up into shallow right field. Hubbard back. Thompson in. Hubbard called off by Thompson. Bill Thompson makes the catch. He had a longer run than he thought for that one. One away in the second. It'll be a little difficult out in right field while we have some sunshine. And we do have some right now. There's some scattered clouds overhead, so the sun will be in and out. And at this time of day, right field and right center field, a little bit tough to play. You can see the sun hits directly into the eyes of the right fielder and the center fielder. That shadow will eventually reach them a couple of innings from now. Here's Denny Gonzalez, the left fielder, batting 191, three homers and five runs driven in. That'll be out of play. Gonzalez talked about by pirate people as their most impressive young prospect and he is young he's only 22 from the Dominican Republic he's an infielder by trade they've got him out in left field right now but they expect to move him probably to third base next year one and one the count this is the time of year and it'll especially be true after the first of September when you will be seeing a lot of youngsters for a lot of teams especially those out of contention called up to the major leagues getting their chance to show what they can do and don't think that's not important that's where Milt Thompson really made his mark on Braves management for the first time last year when he was called up in September that can be a meaningful month even if you're out of the race three and one now on Denny Gonzalez That's the second walk issued by Len Barker. A runner at first with one down. Shortstop Sammy Khalifa stepping in. He's a 237 hitter with two homers, 16 RBIs. Another of the Pirates, Kitty Core, only 21 years old. Now lives in Tucson, Arizona. He's lived all over the world. Born in California. Has spent time in Egypt, St. Louis, Missouri, Libya and Arizona. His father is an Egyptian and a scholar in the Muslim religion. Nothing in one the count. Back safely, Gonzalez. Gonzalez won for three in the stolen base department since coming up from the minors. Here's the 0-1. Caught the corner, nothing in two. Pitcher Lee Tunnel waiting on deck. No score. We're in the top half of the second inning. Pete Van Weer and John Sterling with you from Atlanta. And the 0-2 from Len Barker. Strike three, call. Fastball knee high. Khalifa obviously looking for something else. That pitch was too good to take. And that's the second strikeout for Len Barker. Good location on that fastball. And Barker kept it down. That's a key with him. That's a key with any pitcher, really. Now the pirate pitcher, Lee Tunnel, batting 063. He's two for 32 this year. Runner holding, one ball, no strikes.
Two outs in the inning, a runner at first. And the 1-0. Got the fastball by him, 1-1. One one. Now the 1-1 one one on the way, missed low, 2-1. Here's the 2-1 delivery, line toward right field. Milt Thompson right there to make the catch and end the inning. So nothing doing for the Pirates in the second. They strand another runner. They've left three in the first two innings. We go to the bottom half of the second, still scoreless from Atlanta. In the bottom half of the second, Bob Horner, Terry Harper, and Ken Obergfell do up against right-hander Lee Tunnel. You know what kind of a season the Braves have had if you've been watching all year. Look how much better the Braves are in virtually every department offensively than the Pirates have been this year. And that'll give you an idea of how long a season it's been for Pittsburgh. On the other side of the fence, however, with the exception of the walks department and a little bit in earned run average, things about even. Here's Bob Horner leading off the second, hitting 284, 21 homers, 74 RBIs. He was the hero last night with that dramatic three-run shot on the bottom of the ninth. And Lee Tunnel's first delivery. Got the curveball by him on one. Horner has always been a streaky home run hitter, and you'd love to see him get into one of his hot streaks when you're going into Wrigley Field which the oh. Braves are next. Yeah, we mentioned it last night on the star of the game show. I'll tell you something else in a moment. You know, a lot of people would wonder, how does Horner feel about this year? He is just ecstatic that he's been able to come back after all the worry. Would he have a career? Could he hit again? Would he have any power? And he's, he's passed every test of flying colors. He's really happy about that. Here's the 1-1. Didn't get the breaking ball. He's seen nothing but breaking balls from Lee Tunnel. The count one and two. Well, you mentioned, Pete, he had been a month without a home run. He's due for a streak, and it isn't unthinkable that Bob Horner is going to wind up with more than 25 homers and more than 90 RBIs. That's a pretty good season. Now the one-two on the way, missed outside, two and two. I mean, he didn't really start hitting till the, I guess, the end of May. And we so. can, you know, we can recall back in spring training when everybody was saying we hope Bob Horner will be able to play by the All-Star break. Right. That was really the hope. That he wouldn't miss more than a half season. At least played all year. Missing a game here and there, but he's been in there just about every day. He's had a fine year. Count full now, three and two. And the 3 2 on the way now from Tunnel. Breaking ball got him on the outside corner. Tunnel records the second strikeout. No argument from Bob Horner. He was looking for a fastball. Got the breaking ball instead. One down. Here's a good breaking ball. And Lee Tunnel, a guy who struggled, has just struck out both Murph and Horner back to back. That's a great curve at the knees on the outside. Perfect location. Now Terry Harper batting 248 with 16 homers, 61 RBIs. Nothing, nothing. We're in the bottom half of inning two. Inside corner with a fastball, 0-1. That missed in the count even. And the count goes to two and one. This has been the best season 
from a run production standpoint for Terry Harper with 16 homers and 61 RBIs. But he must be a little disappointed in his batting average. It's 248. He's had years where he's hit better for Atlanta as a reserve player. Up the middle, Khalifa showing good range to his left on to first. Got him. This kid's played some good shortstop in this series. He's also made a couple of big errors in key spots in the game, but he looks like an outstanding prospect for the Pirates. Two down in the second, and Ken Obrick fell the batter. That looks like something you'd see from Steve Bedrosian's numbers this year. No decision, giving up no earned runs in eight innings. Been that kind of year for Tunnel, too. Obrick fell, hitting 292. He has three home runs, 30 RBIs. Tunnel deals a strike 0 and 1. And now the one strike pitch popped it foul. That's going to make the seats. And it's nothing in two now in Obergefell. The 0-2 from Lee Tunnel is a breaking ball in the dirt, one and two. Tunnel out of Baylor University, went there for three years. Came out of Anderson High School in Austin, Texas. He was the Braves second, or the Pirates second round draft pick in June of 1981. And it's two and two now on Obergefell. No score, bottom half of inning two. And the two two from Tunnel got him with a good curveball. That's three strikeouts for Lee Tunnel, a one two three bottom half of the second. We've completed two here in Atlanta, and it's a scoreless ball game. As we go to the top half of the third inning, let me introduce you to a couple of familiar faces you'll be seeing a lot of this fall on uh, Super Football Saturday on TBS. Craig Sager off to my right, Alex Hawkins off to my left. They'll be your studio hosts during uh, Super Football Saturday presentations, afternoon and night games. We'll be chatting with them as we go to the third inning. And in the top of the third, it'll be Orsalak leading it off for the Pirates. He's grounded out in his only at bat. And the first pitch coming from Len Barker in the third is down low ball one. Orsalak, who shows bunt at least once, it seems, every at bat. Well, gentlemen, you're about set to get things rolling this Saturday, huh? You betcha. I think we've been set for a while. I've been going through meetings from morning to night for a couple of weeks. You too, huh? <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> Here's the 1-0. Inside 2-0. Well, Craig, why don't you let our listeners know uh, what they'll be seeing this Saturday, the first week of college football on TBS. We kick off with Florida State Tulane. That's our game from the SEC package. Then at night, we're going to be doing Oregon and Washington State. We'll also keep you updated on all the scores from the other games across the country. Two and one the count now on Joe Orsalak. We're in the top of the third, no score. And Hawk, good to have you back. Thank in you, the Pete. the employ of TBS. Thank you, Pete. We catch you from time to time. Uh, one year here, one year there. That's right. <laughs> Resurrection Day. <laughs> Barker's 2-1 pitch on the way to Orsalak. It's 2-2. Two two. Our job, Pete, is to keep everybody in, in touch with the latest scores from across the country with our satellite receiving dishes. We'll be getting every game that's being played out there or televised or broadcast to any part of the country. 
We'll keep an eye on all those games. Also keep you updated on the pennant races in baseball. We're studio control. We're going to let you know what's happening everywhere. And it all begins at noon Eastern this Saturday. That should be handled by Glenn Hubbard. It will be. And there's one down. Okay, guys, going to put you on the spot a little bit here. We have seen all the preseason football publications, all the Associated Press and UPI polls. Who's going to be number one in college football this year in hockey? Most everybody, Pete, is uh, going with uh, Oklahoma and Nebraska teams like that. Uh, I'm going for Bowling Green. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of viewers out there. They'll be glad to hear that. I know one executive producer that will be delighted to hear that, too. I know one thing, I'm not going to pick my alma mater, Northwestern. <laughs> no, why not? <laughs> got to be confident. Craig, how they look this year? Much greatly improved? Well, they've got two mascots this year instead of one. <laughs> <laughs> They're greatly improved, then. I think the sleeper, Pete, is going to be Oklahoma State. They have a lot of talent. They keep being overlooked out in that Big 8 country by Oklahoma and Nebraska. They've got the fastest defense, I think, in the country. That's your sleeper. And no question about it. Any team that can beat South Carolina in a Gator Bowl... <laughs> That's a base hit for Johnny Ray, just beyond the reach of Rafael Ramirez. Hit number two off Len Barker. And I believe Oklahoma State is one of the early teams featured on the uh, TBS package, are they not? Something like the third or fourth weekend? You're going to see them on the seventh against Washington. So right there, you've got two of the best teams in the country going head-to-head. -head. Our schedule this year is tremendous. You can see Oklahoma. You're going to see Ohio State. You can see the top players in the country and also the top candidates for the Heisman Trophy. We have Bo Jackson coming up in the second week of our season. This is Bill Madlock, who had a base hit his first time up. He'll bat with one out and Johnny Ray at first. What about South Carolina? Hawk, you... Uh, just came back from there, Pete. does over there. They're a good team. They're about the same kind of team they were last year. I doubt that they'll win as many games. They can't have the magic going for them like they did last year where everything falls in place. But they're a good football team. Joe Morrison's just a tremendous coach. And, of course, one of the packages uh, on TBS's college football this, this fall is, once again, the Southeastern Conference. And, as always, that looks very, very competitive. From top to bottom, that conference is always so tough. When you talk about Alabama last year going five and six, coming back, being one of the weaker teams in the conference last year, and having the high expectations this year, it's going to be a race right to the wire. I'll tell you, everybody's improved, though. All the conferences. Pac-10's going to be a stronger conference. Big Ten's, Big Ten's going to be stronger. Be strong. The, yes, the sleeper is. of the nation may be Illinois. They've got better, more pro players, pro prospects on that team, I understand, from pro uh, scouts than any team in the country going to give you a chance to talk about a club after this next pitch that some of our pirate fans who are viewing may be interested in. What about the University of Pittsburgh this year? It's kind of a key year for them, is it not? Uh, they were they were really down last year. They had some problems, uh, particularly during the middle of the season, but uh, they've got the, the talent up there, the material, no question about it. Coach Fazio has been feeling the heat ever since he got there, and I think uh, if any team has been practicing hard, practicing probably harder than anybody in the month of August, he has them out there ready to get a, a, you know, a good start on their season. The challenge is there, like Hawk says, but they just haven't been able to put it together the last couple of years. Plus, those people are spoiled after the great teams with Dorsett and all. Any other coaches you see having uh, perhaps a key season coming up for them this year outside of Foch Fazio? I think uh, Joe Cap is uh, out at uh, California. <laughs> you know, he's had 30 different assistant coaches in the last three years. Hadn't found enough tequila drinkers, I guess, huh? <laughs> Toward third, let's see if they can turn two. They will not have time to. Obergfell's only play on to first. Johnny Ray moves to second. And there are two outs in the top of the third. The batter will be Jason Thompson, who walked his first time up. So your base uh, this fall will be TBS Studios, and you'll be keeping everyone in touch with uh, every game all around the country. And that, of course, is always exciting, especially when it gets past the mid-season point and you really begin to get a feel for who's going where and who the surprise teams are. It should be a lot of fun. As you know, it begins this uh, Saturday at 12.30 with Tulane and Florida State. We'll also keep a big uh, eye all over the country, though, as we said, for games from coast to coast and keep updated on the baseball games. We're, we're going to be busy, Hawk. Huh? Other sports, too. Boxing, NASCAR, wrestling, <laughs> golf. We have all the scores. Craig will. <laughs> And I know you're going to be right on top of that of that wrestling beat, Hawk. Specialize in that, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing at one, the count on Thompson. We're in the top of the third here in Atlanta. Craig Sager and Alex Hawkins joining us here in the Braves broadcast booth. And we'll be looking forward to their reports, which will come your way every Saturday this fall on TBS. 
Pete, you're doing the Big Ten games. That should be really exciting. Nine of the ten returning quarterbacks come back in the Big Ten. Plus, you have Keith Byers, the leading candidate for the Heisman Trophy. That conference should really be exciting this year. I tell you what, talking to Big Ten people about a month ago in a meeting they had in Chicago, they really are looking at eight of the ten teams being potential bowl teams this year. I understand Indiana's greatly improved. I really, I have heard that they really are the best team in years. They've and picked up some great recruits and some big junior college transfers, too, that should really help them. And Lou Holtz in Minnesota a couple of years ago, in fact, they've lost to Northwestern three straight years, but they're talking about Minnesota actually being a contender in the Big Ten Conference this year. I saw where some people even picked them to win it. Keep an eye on Georgia Tech, too. I went out and talked with Bill Curry the other day and watched his team work out. They look good. Dewberry is a quarterback. And one of, uh, the, one of the TBS primetime games, which ought to be a great one this year, is that Georgia-Georgia Tech battle. That should be a dandy. That's right at the end of the season. Here's the 1-2 to Thompson. Ground ball right side. This should end the inning. And it will, so the Pirates fail to score. Gentlemen, we thank you for joining us, and we wish you the best of luck in the studios of TBS this fall. We're looking forward to it. Thank, thank you, you, Pete. Look forward to seeing you. Bottom half of the third, lower third of the order to up for Atlanta. Glenn Hubbard, Bruce Benedict, and Len Barker. In a scoreless ball game, Pirates with two hits. The Braves have one. This one's starting out like the game we had last night when Steve Bedrosian and Rick Roden battled it out. You'd never know it by the final score that it was a pitcher's battle, but it was for seven innings last night. Pirates had a 2-1 lead through seven. The Braves wound up winning it with five runs in the bottom half of the ninth. Hubbard with a six-game hitting streak. 235, four homers, 33 RBIs on the season. And Lee Tunnel's first pitch. Drilled into right center field, and that's going to fall in for a base hit. Mike Brown thought about trying to make a shoestring or diving catch, but decided against it, and Glenn Hubbard has now hit safely in seven straight games. We'll bring up the catcher Bruce Benedict batting 212 no homers eight RBIs <laughs> one ball no strikes Benedict a good bunter but you don't normally see a bunt when the pitchers do up and Len Barker is on deck. However, I will say this, if Bill Madlock continues to play as deep a third base as he is right now, it wouldn't be a bad idea to drop one down that way. I kind of bet Bobby Wan's going to play hit and run if he has a chance here. If he gets the count his way. That's another good possibility with Benedict, although Benedict's batting average is not very high. He is a good contact hitter. And the count is even now, one and one. One ball, one strike. Runner is going, the swing and a miss and a pitch out. Pena's throw through to center field. Hubbard tries for third, and there'll be no throw. The Pirates were right on top of it, but it all backfired when Tony Pena's throw got through into center field. Hubbard will get a stolen base, and an error will be charged to Tony Pena. Once again, the Pirates read the Braves correctly, and that's happened four times in this series. But this time, Tony Pena makes a poor throw. It hops right in front of Khalifa and also the throw stayed down it didn't come up for him and so hubby's at third now with no one out Pete I know the Braves changed their signs because I had Bobby Wine on the star of the game after the first game of this series that's the fourth straight time that the Pirates have guessed correctly one and two now on Benedict the infield playing in now for Pittsburgh and tunnels one two breaking ball outside two and two well, that's what Bobby Wine means when he says the Braves are going to play very aggressively under him. He's going to take some chances. There was a good possibility there that with a guy like Pena behind the plate, Glenn Hubbard may have been thrown out at second base. And if it happens, it happens. That's what Bobby Wine says. We're going to run into some outs playing this way. But you also make things happen. 
And the Braves may have just manufactured their first run of the game. The bad throw by Pena has put a runner at third with nobody out. And the 2-2 now to Benedict is high, 3-2. And the payoff pitch misses ball four. Runners first and third. Nobody out. Pitcher Len Barker coming up. That's the first walk issued by Lee Tuttle. And now Len Barker is looking for his first hit of the year. He's 0 for 12 on the season. I think the Braves are going to sacrifice here. I think that Bobby Wine is going to have Barker. Barker is not a good hitter. He really hasn't hit very much. He's 0 for 12 this year. And I don't think Hubbard will come home, but I think the Braves are going to try to get Benedict to second base. Donald's first pitch on the way. Barker missed it. Trying to bunt it. Nothing in one. Nobody out. Runners at the corners in the bottom of the third. Scoreless ball game. Well, he'll throw anywhere, won't he? You very seldom see a catcher throw down the third base. But Tony Pena, with, I think, the best arm in the National League by far, and not afraid to use it, Now the 1-1. He got the bunt down. Pena is going to take a shot at second base. He got him there on the first, not in time. So the sacrifice attempt fails as Benedict has cut down. Pena to Khalifa. Hubbard holding at third. Barker becomes the runner at first. And we'll go back to the top of the order now. Milt Thompson. Actually, that was a pretty good bunt by Len Barker, but Tony Pena made a terrific play. He jumped out of it. Was right on the bunt and that great gun of his. And Bruce was forced at second base. Thompson had a single in the first inning. One of two hits picked up by the Braves off tunnel. Infield in at first and third. Double play depth at second and short. Toward third. Madlock coming home. Hits the runner. Bounces away. Hubbard is safe. Runners are at first and second. That's always a tough throw for a third baseman to make. And a third baseman should actually throw a little bit off the plate so he doesn't throw right into that runner. Madlock did throw into the runner, hit him, and the Braves lead it one nothing. And if Madlock had it to do over again, I think he would take a couple of steps to give himself a better angle. He should have gone either side, but instead he throws right down the line. He tried to go past Hubbard or over Hubbard and hit Hubby in the back, bounced away, and the Braves had a run. That'll be an error on the third baseman. The Braves take a one nothing lead. Well, the Pirates have made a couple of... Defensive mistakes here in the third. The Braves have picked up a run. Runners first and second. Still only one out. Ramirez the batter. He grounded out his first time. And he takes low and inside ball one. A throw by Bill Madlock. The same kind of a throw a first baseman has to make on a ground ball when he's trying to start a double play. You've got to throw it somewhere other than right into the runner. And it also beats the same kind of a throw a catcher would have to make if he drops a third strike or fields a bunt mm -hmm. in front of the plate. And what the catchers do is what really what Madlock should have done. They usually take a few steps to go either left or right. It doesn't matter where. Just to get a different angle. 2-0. Oh, the count on Ramirez. Here's Tunnel's 2-0 oh pitch. Fly ball. Left field. Not too deep. Denny Gonzalez out there waiting. And the runners will hold it first and second. There are two outs. Now Dale Murphy, who struck out his first time. Uh -huh. 
Murph only two home runs away now from his major league high of 36, which he has done three straight years. Had a good cut at the breaking ball. Nothing had won the count. There are your runners. Thompson at first. Barker at second. And it's one and one. I'll tell you a funny little note about home run hitters for the Braves over the years. Dale Murphy, three years in a row, has hit 36 home runs. And baseball's all-time home run king, Hank Aaron. He had three different years where he hit 44 home runs. They count two and one on Dale Murphy. Murphy with 91 RBIs. Number two in the league is Tommy Herr of the Cardinals with 87. Broke his bat on that roller toward short. Khalifa goes to second in time to end the inning. But the Braves, thanks to a couple of pirate misplays, pick up a run. And at the end of three, it's a 1-0 Atlanta lead. <laughs> Through three innings, Atlanta one run, two hits, no errors. The Pirates no runs, two hits, two errors. And those couple of miscues by the Pirates led to the Braves' run, which is unearned. We're in the fourth inning. Mike Brown, Tony Pena, Denny Gonzalez do up against Len Barker. And as we go to the fourth, once again, here's John Sterling. Okay, thank you, Pete. Len Barker needs a good outing. He needs a good outing very much, and he's having pretty good one tonight. Walking two and giving up two hits in the first three innings. He has a one nothing lead. I don't know how, how long they'll let Barker go. I don't think they're counting pitches as such. I think... I think that when Bobby Wine feels that Barker is starting to really struggle, they'll take him out. They don't want him to really pitch too much. Barker really has had an odd year. When he began the season, you knew there were going to be problems. He was coming off elbow surgery. He'd have a good outing, and then he'd have a bad outing. He was very inconsistent, and then he went on the disabled list, and since coming back, he really has not been able to put anything together. I think everybody thought, John, there was that one outing in Houston where Barker worked seven innings, struck out something like eight men, just pitched tremendous baseball through seven innings. Everybody thought he was on the way back then. Mm -hmm. But then that elbow flared up again, and he wound up back on the disabled list. And Barker's last six starts, going all the way back to July 10th, the longest he's gone is five innings. So it worries him. Lenny wants to pitch, and he wants to win. And there's a breaking ball strike to begin the top of the fourth to Mike Brown. Barker has a big contract, and he is not content just to sit back. He wants to win. He wants to pitch. He wants to contribute. Now he hears the slings and arrows concerning the trade a couple of years ago, and the Braves gave up Brett Butler and Brooke Jacoby. The count of one and one on Mike Brown. We begin the top of the fourth. Braves lead at one nothing, trying for their third straight. There's another good curveball from Barker. Brown and a rookie left-hand reliever that we haven't seen Pat Clemens came over to the Pirates. Primarily for John Candelaria. Then the Pirates got rid of a couple of salaries, making the Angels take George Hendrick and, and Al Holland. Candyman was the guy that the Angels wanted. And for the Angels, I guess they're going by the old rule of thumb. Baseball people will tell you this all the time. When you have a chance to win a pennant, you better go get it because you may not have that chance for a while. And the Angels have a two-and-a-half game lead with less than 40 games to play. Going to be a dogfight. The Angels, Kansas City, and maybe the A's. Got to be out of play in the count. Evens two and two. You know, Pete, who made that statement to me a long time ago was Harry Dalton and then Dalton made it 
That's when we were both in Baltimore. Then Dalton made it with the Milwaukee Brewers mm -hmm. when they made a couple of big trades. And the Brewers went to the seventh game of the World Series before losing it. That's actually the way Len Barker came to Atlanta. The Braves were trying to pick up a pitcher for that final month. Mm -hmm. They could win a few ball games. It didn't work out that way, but had it worked out that way, everybody would be raving about the deal. The curveball misses. The count goes full three and two. It really puts the veteran player on the spot when a team picks up a player specifically to try to win the pennant that year. Yeah, no question. Well, as far as Barker was concerned, he was an innocent victim. And Bob Warner got hurt and missed the last six weeks of that year. That's what killed the Braves. And the Braves wound up losing the pennant in 83 by about two games. Now the payoff pitch. It'll be out of play on the high pop-up. Yeah, got the old baseball. You know, you date yourself. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you a line that I've heard in baseball for a long time. It shows you how you date yourself in a second. The payoff. Struck him out. Bruce Benedict holds on. That's the third strikeout for Lent. One away here on the top of the fourth beat. I'm sure you've heard when you're a kid, like I did when I was a kid, that some announcer would say, well, you ruin a $50 suit trying to get a 250 baseball. $50 suit, eh? 250 baseball. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago. One away, here's Tony Pena. You can still get a $50 suit, but... You, you can still get a 250 baseball, too, but you hit it once, it looks like an egg. And if you try to get the baseball in that $50 suit, the suit unravels. <laughs> <laughs> One and oh on Payne, you were in the top of the fourth. There's a good fastball. He's got the arm. He just needs the the rhythm and maybe the confidence in his pitches. I think the confidence is a big factor. Because when Barker gets behind, he really gets hurt. Like most pitches, he'll groove one and give up the big hit. He's a very deliberate worker, even when he's going good. The curveball has popped up. Obi does not have a play. Goes in that little camera position on the third base side. It doesn't matter what sport you play, whether you're a pro at it or an amateur, just out for a good time. If it's baseball or golf or tennis or whatever the sport may be, you know what confidence, what part confidence plays in it. Boy, it really is something, isn't it? If you're not going good, it gets to the point where you wonder if you, you can do it at all. And when you have it, you do it without thinking. A guy gets hot in basketball, boy. He just wants the ball. He takes a shot, doesn't even look. Mm -hmm. It'll be a 1-2 pitch to Tony Pena. We're in the top of the fourth. At a very leisurely pace. Fastball's down low, 2-2. Two and two. You know, last night Bob Horner did something, and I asked him a, a question on the star of the game. He's kind of humble. Come on, Marcus, it out. Talking about all sports. Right now, Barker's 2 2. Popped him up. It'll be out of play behind the plate. I think. That's a nice catch. Sign him up. I think every, every one of us who's played any sports at all would like to hit the winning shot in the last second or catch the touchdown pass in the last second or hit the home run in the bottom of the ninth to win. Bob Horner had that feeling last night. That's a pretty good feeling.
The curveball is low, and the count goes full three and two. A two out, three run home run to win the ball game by one run. You know, someday that's going to happen in a World Series in the final game. That guy will become more famous than anyone. That's also going to be out of play. <laughs> Getting some plays made in the stands tonight. Three and two on Pena. And that's going to be out of play. goes the opposite way it'll be a double off the wall Milt Thompson chases it down Pena will hold it second with a line drive double down the right field line that's how Tony Pena hits he uses the ballpark and hits line drives he just kept fouling him off till he got one that he liked outside part of the plate just went with it hitters like Pena you don't know how to pitch to him there really is no book on a hitter like that. And also, you can't give him a bad pitch at three and two. And that's why you should try to stay away from three and two. Barker struck out Mike Brown on a three-two pitch, then yielded the double. So the Pirates have the tying run at second with one out. Here's another rookie and a prize prospect, Denny Gonzalez. Barker is very deliberate. Jack Buck gave me a pretty good line, the great Cardinal announcer, about a deliberate pitcher. He said you could knit a sweater between pitches. <laughs> or you read War and Peace, whatever you choose. There's a strike. <laughs> Gonzalez, nine for 48 as a pirate. He spent the year in Hawaii. Well, some pitchers, you say they pitch like they're double parked. Glenn, one of those guys that pitches like he's got a reserved spot in the all-day lot. <laughs> and like the parking lot is absolutely free. <laughs> Misses the breaking ball, 0-2. Now 0-2, Barker can throw a nasty pitch. Doesn't matter how you pitch. If you can get the job done, doesn't matter if you work quickly, work slowly. If you can get them out, nobody's going to mess with you. That really is true. However, if you pitch a bit quicker, the chances are that your infield is going to be a little mm -hmm. more alive. Two. You know, Glenn Hubbard had, was sneaking in behind Pena at second base. Only he may have thought there was a pickoff play because he went all the way over to second base and was there when the pitch was delivered, and the Braves had no one playing second base. You look at Chuck Tanner on the top step. Well, he has a good breaking ball. Pena steals third. And Gonzalez strikes out, so there are two outs in the inning, the inning, the tying run at third base. That's eight stolen bases for Tony Pena. That's a pretty good number for a catcher. Something else he does well is run. Now with two outs, here's Sam Khalifa with a pitcher on deck. 
The tying run at third, two outs, top of the fourth. Pete Van Weer and John Sterling with you from Atlanta, Fulton County Stadium. The Braves got an unearned run in the bottom of the third to take a 1-0 lead. by Benedict. Now, Charlie Finley, the former irascible owner of the Kansas City Oakland A's, who had really many brilliant ideas, some of some of which have been adopted by baseball. But he had the idea of having a 30-second clock up there. In fact, he did have a 30-second clock in Kansas City, just no one ever paid attention to it. And a pitcher would have to pitch before 30 seconds was up. That's never called. I don't know if it's in the books or not, but fastball is high 2-0 oh. they may want to walk Khalifa and get to Lee Tunnel I would say that Len Barker tests the 30 second rule if there is such a rule two pitches have been a little bit indicative of the times that Barker's gotten into trouble this year and he starts getting wild up there up around chin level he's got to keep that ball down now they're going to walk him so it'll go in the books as an intentional walk and that's the third walk Barker has struck out four and walked three and four innings or three and two thirds. Lee Tunnels. Oh, I thought he was going to forget his jacket. He just about did. <laughs> he was about to stride to the plate with that jacket on. <laughs> He's, he has kind of a bemused smile. What time did I leave my wake up call? I would think he'd find it a little warm with that jacket on today. But Tunnel is two for 33 as a hitter. The Pirates have the tying run at third, the go-ahead run at first, two outs in the fourth. The old fastball right through, strike one. Houston beat Chicago this afternoon, three to nothing, and tonight St. Louis plays at Cincinnati. And that's a heck of a matchup. Joaquin Andujar, Mario Soto. Fouled way down the right field line, 0 and 2. Minnesota beat Toronto this afternoon, 6-5, to five, so Toronto's lead over the Yankees cut to 4.5, 3 in the loss column. And tonight, Boston at Cleveland, Kansas City at Milwaukee, Texas at Chicago. The only game involving the pennant race, or pennant races, Kansas City 2.5 games behind California, and even in the loss column, so they can cut the Angel lead to 2 if they win tonight at Milwaukee. 1 and 2. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon from Chicago. We'll be on the air, I believe, at 2.05. Eastern time, 2.05. We'll have a little pregame before you. Then baseball action from Wrigley Field, one of the great ballparks in the country. The runner going from first and tunnel. Now they trap the runner at third. Good play by Benedict. Benedict made that play. They run him back and tag him out. And so Tunnel will lead off the inning. Bruce Benedict made a great fake to second base. Bruce Benedict made that play. And we'll see it as we go out. The runner, Khalifa, was going. Benedict looked at second base and threw to third to trap Pena off. And so the play goes 2-5-2-5. Two, five, two, five. Obi makes the tag at the end of three and a half. One nothing great. Subscribe today to Braves Banner and you'll receive the September issue featuring Dale Murphy on the cover. To subscribe and get the next 11 big issues at the super low rate of just $8.95, mail a check or money order to Braves Banner, P.O. Box 89162, Atlanta, Georgia, 30312. Remember, 11 issues, $8.95. That guarantees you a full season of Braves action for next year, too. That's the Braves Banner. Robert Horner leads off the bottom of the fourth. Braves lead it 1 0.
Len Barker has thrown 80 pitches in four innings. And has him shut out. Horner, a strikeout victim of Tunnel. Back in the second. The curveball frozen. And this one is ripped to dead center. Back goes Orsalak. She's gone. We told you Horner, a streak hitter. And that's number 22 on the year. The Braves lead it 2 nothing. A line drive over the center field fence. If he gets in one of those streaks, he's just a marvel to watch. And we're headed for Wrigley Field. You get the wind blowing out there and get a hot Bob Horner. No telling how many home runs he may hit in a four-game series. That was a low fastball. And he hit a two-iron shot. Just did clear the wall. And Terry Harper takes it down low, ball one. 22 homers now and 75 RBIs on the year for the captain. Those are good stats no matter what, but they're really great stats when you consider he really didn't get into the flow until very late May. One and one on Terry. You know, the Braves have a strength. There are many areas of the team that are suspect. There's no question about that, but the Braves do have one strength, and that is perhaps the best one-two combination in baseball in Dale Murphy and Bob Horner. The Braves have to build around that strength. That's a very viable asset. The curveball is right in there, one and two. No runs, three hits, two errors for the Pirates. And two runs, three hits, no errors for the Braves. You know, over on the radio side, the bottom of the fourth, designated tonight as the Goodies home run jackpot inning. So some lucky customer won a lot of money on Horn's home run. That's good. We're sorry to miss it, but... It'll be a 1-2 from Lee Tunnel to Terry Harper. And the fastball misses 2-2. Two and two. Rick Mailer goes against Steve Trout tomorrow afternoon. On Friday afternoon, Joe Johnson pitches against Ray Fontenot. Saturday afternoon, Steve Bedrosian against Steve Engel. That's a base hit for Harper in the hole. And on Sunday, Len Barker comes back against Derek Botello. One more thing for Dale Murphy and Bob Warner. You really have to pray, if you're a Braves fan, that the wind is blowing out for the three days, first three days. Three left-handers in a row against the Braves. Terry Harper at first base, no one out. Bottom of the fourth. Braves lead it 2-0. Here's Ken Oberfeld. And the pirate bullpen begins. Cecilio Guante starts to warm up. There's a strike. gets back easily. John Evans one and one. Uh, Pete, I did not hear your interview with Craig Sager and Alec Hawkins. Captain who? Well, the captain has picked Bowling Green as the number one team in the nation this year. <laughs> kind of a sleeper, he said. <laughs> you know what? I've known Alec Hawkins for a long time. And I believe it. <laughs> I mean, I believe you picked Bowling Green. When's the, when's TBS first game? This Saturday. Oh. Fastball's up, huh? The afternoon game, Florida State and Tulane. And uh, Saturday night, it'll be uh, Washington State and Oregon. Oh, well, that's right. Yes. 12.30. Yes. Eastern time. And the Braves, Cubs in between. That's triple hitter on TBS. 
That's going to be fun Saturday. Two great football games. College football sandwiching the Braves and Cubbies from Wrigley. Two and one on Ken Obergfell. Harper at first base. Tunnel is a pretty deliberate pitcher himself. The curveball grounded foul. The count evens two and two. <laughs> He's was, all right. That was Rick Zerone. <laughs> Play acting. <laughs> Yeah, he's okay. Rick and Pasquale Perez just in front of him. Pirates pitch out. Well, that, that was a sign that they saw that wasn't there. Now the count goes three and two. And normally you don't pitch out two and two unless you're sure. So the Braves have either changed their signs again, which is very possible. Pirates have Stolen two signs today. It'll be a 3-2 to Obi. Let's see if Harper's going. Tunnel thought so, and Jason Thompson just saved Tunnel an error. That's a heck of a scoop because that ball hit right in front of him. Tunnel threw it straight down. Well, they look at the baseball again. You know, we always talk about records. There's so many stats in baseball. They might set a record tonight. The longest 2 nothing game in history. <laughs> really? <laughs> there goes Terry. Line by Obi. Base hit right field. Harper stopped at second. He's on his way to third. Nice base running by Terry Harper. He had to hold up to see if the ball would be caught. So Obi lines one to right. And the Braves have runners on the corners with no one out. Got a breaking ball down and in, and Ulrich Fell has been pulling that pitch this year. Good base running by Harper. He stopped just shy of the bag at second. If the ball had been caught, he could have made it back to first. When the ball dropped, he simply stepped on second and took off for third. That's a bull. Obie's average up around 294. He has a chance at 300 this year. He's had a pretty good season. And Obi needed a good season because he's a free agent. Claudel Washington, a free agent at the end of the year. And it's a great year to be a free agent in baseball, if I understand the agreement. And by the way, I don't. <laughs> but I, I believe that there's no more free agent draft. It isn't like 10 teams or 12 teams or 13. Now, you can talk to every team in the major leagues. And I think free. you can start talking the day after the season ends. Yeah. You don't have to wait for the old draft, which won't be held anymore. Glenn Hubbard cuts and misses strike one. Well, I'll tell you whose phone's going to ring a little bit. Mr. Gibson of Detroit. Mm -hmm. He's the plum of the free agent players. He's having a big year in Detroit. He turned down a whole bunch of money, too. you got to give him credit. Curveball. Smacked off tunnel. They get the force at second. That's all. Oh, Glenn Hubbard hit it like a bullet and smacked it right off Lee Tunnel. Knocked his glove off. Watch this one. Curve ball. Tunnel gets the glove out. The glove is knocked right off his hand. He looked at third, looked at first, then realized he still had to play at second. And so runners are still at first and third. Now goes the field is choice, and... Ken Oberkfell forced at second. So the Braves have runners on the corners, one out, and here's Bruce Benedict. Let's see if uh, Bobby Wine puts any kind of a play on here. Bruce handles the bat very well, and he makes contact. First and third, one out, and one thing Bobby Wine would want to do, stay out of the ground ball double play here, and also, of course, try to get the run. Braves lead at 2-0. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Guante continues to warm in the Pirate bullpen. You look at Chuck Tanner and the Pirate dugout. Bruce grounds a foul. Benedict walked his first time up. Braves scored a run that inning in the 
third. A single by Hubbard. A stolen base. He went to third on a throwing error by Tony Pena. Eventually, the run came in on an error by Bill Madlock when he threw Mill Thompson's ground ball away. Trying to get Hubbard at the plate. Runners lead first and third, the 0-1. Line drive. Base hit, left field. One hop against the fence. It kicks away from Gonzalez. Around third comes Hubbard. Can he score? Yes, he can. A line drive double by Bruce Benedict down the left field line. The Braves lead it 4 nothing, And give Benny two RBIs. Benedict got good wood on this one. Fastball was riding in on him, and he pulled it right down that line. Takes a funny kick here. I think it hit off the corner of the sign. Nope, hit off one of those seams on the left field fence. And started rolling toward left center field. That gave Hubbard all the extra time he needed to score. Standing. The Braves have scored three times here in the bottom of the fourth. Here is Len Barker taking inside ball one. And for Len Barker, he has a 4 nothing lead. And he needs to retire the Pirates in the top of the fifth for it to be an official game for him. Starter needs to go five innings. One and one. Pirates are not going to their bullpen yet. And Tunnel, remember, was up at bat when the Pirates tried a double steal, which didn't work. Tony Payne was caught off third by Bruce. Now they'll pinch it for Tunnel if he can get out of this inning. Bounce to second. Off the glove of Tunnel, I believe, and Ray throws out Barker. Bruce Benedict moves over to third. I think that hit his glove. It would be 1-4-3 if it did. Pete, you think it hit his glove? Yes, I do. Kind of changed directions on it. Right off the tip of Tunnel's glove. And two A here is Mill Thompson. Braves lead at four nothing. Bottom of the fourth. The curveball, a base hit right field. And Tunnel's curveball really being hit this inning. Remember, Porter went down, hit a curveball for the home run. Hubbard hit a curveball off the glove of Tunnel, hit it hard. And curveball a little slow. It, not that it's hanging, but it's just breaking a little slowly, and Braves are going down getting it. So I'll give Mill Thompson a base hit to right field and an RBI, and the Braves lead it 5 0. Remember, before the Pirates came in, before the Braves made the managerial change, Atlanta had lost 12 out of 13. Ramirez lines a foul. They only win the second game of doubleheader in San Diego. And Pete, the last laugher. Boy, that's been a long time ago. Offhand, I can't even remember when it was. Well, I can't either. I have to go back and look that up. <laughs> I can't either. But because even though the Braves won three out of four in San Francisco, the games were pretty close. Thompson off at first base. He might do some running. He stays put here. The curveball. Face it again. Center field. All off the curveball. Thompson round second, but holds on. Joe Orselak makes a quick recovery. Braves have two on, and the Pirates will come to the mound. And Chuck Tanner will signal to the bullpen. They wanted to get through, if possible, the bottom of the fourth with Tunnel leading off. But he couldn't make it. One more big hit. Pirates will be put to sleep for the night. So Chuck Tanner will take Tunnel out. Cecilio Guante, right-hander, will come in from the Pirate bullpen. The Braves have scored four times here in the bottom of the fourth. They lead it 5-0 and have two on and two out for Murph. We'll see what Murph does against Guante when we return right after this. Well, we are doing some research tonight. I asked when was the last laughter, and the professor has it. Found one back on, all the way back on July 14th when the Braves beat the Phillies 12-3. Well, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. This is August 27th. 28th. Yeah, 28th. 
That's six weeks, six full weeks since right. the Braves have had a game where they've opened up an early lead and coasted home. But of course, this one's far from over yet. We're only in the fourth, but you've got to like the signs right now. But boy, that is a long time. Cecilio Guante comes out of the power bullpen. Lee Tunnel goes three and two thirds, gives up eight hits. To this point, five runs, one walk, and three strikeouts. Four of the runs are earned. The tunnel responsible for Bill Thompson at second, Ramirez at first. Guante, strictly a relief pitcher. This is his 50th game. But here's Murph, the ninth batter. Complete word for the Braves in the fourth. Remember, Horns led it off with that home run as 22nd of the year. Braves have speed on the bases and power at the plate. Thompson at second, Ramirez at first. Khalifa will make the play, and that retires the side. But the Braves get four runs on six hits. No errors and two left. At the end of four innings of play, it's 5 nothing Braves. on daddy's knee at the old ball game. <laughs> They're never too young to love baseball. Some great shots from our great camera people. Five nothing Braves. We hit the fifth. Len Barker has not had a win in a long time. I could find the date because he, he shut out the Mets in New York. That youngster just saw himself up on the Matrix board. That's where wow. that big smile came from. Oh, that was a long time ago. My goodness. Cecilio Guante leads off of the Pirates here in the top of the fifth. Barker needs these three outs. And then some. That's fouled away. Pete, I bet you could give me the exact date, but I bet Barker's last win occurred in the second week of May. Yeah, the 13th of May. I think it was a one nothing game against the Mets. Yeah, that's when he worked seven strong innings. Didn't walk anybody. That was oh. one of those two games he pitched early in the year yeah. when he looked so good. Guante's getting another bat. You know, we've talked about all the bats that have been shattered. You get Oh, four or five bats shattered every night. And someone was asked about it from one of the companies, and he admitted that the wood is not as good. I wonder why. <laughs> I'm not a lumberjack, <laughs> Jack. You're asking the wrong guy, but I don't know either why wood would... Maybe there are a lot more termites than ever. I don't know. The 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball is fouled off. Jeff Devin is up in the Braves bullpen. They, they're keeping a very watchful eye on Barker. They don't want him to hurt himself again. They want him to get his confidence back. And they're going to pitch him every fourth day so he gets his rhythm back. Oh, this could be his last inning. Count goes two and two. He's up there in pitches, too. He's thrown 84 pitches already. We're only in the fifth inning. Braves play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday afternoon in Chicago. Everyone's a 2.05 start, but Saturday, and that's, there's a swinging strike out of Guante. Barker got good stuff. That was a good high hard one. That's the best fastball he's thrown tonight. County San and Leo Mazzoni like that kind of pitching. And C-Dub looking on. One away. Saturday game is... Uh, Eastern time, a 4.05 start from Chicago. And the Pirates, uh, the Braves play another afternoon game in Pittsburgh on Monday on Labor Day. I'll check my schedule for you. Mm -hmm. 
Barker down low, 1 and 0. And Pittsburgh, that's a 1 35 start. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I never get starting times right anyway, but that's about the time. There's another strike. You know, it used to be in the major leagues, night games began at 8, day games began at 2, and that was it. Why now? Every day is a different Every time. team has 11, 12 different starting times now. 2 and 1. Well, one of the things you have to interpret when you're looking at schedules is that the first pitch, or is that when television goes on the air? Orselak fouls it off, and I always get him wrong. I don't mean sometimes. <laughs> I always get him wrong. What's really fun is over on the radio side when you try to back time and oh, figure yeah. out what time all the pregame programming begins. Usually the day before, I think, the pregame shows begin. <laughs> <laughs> two and two on Orslack. One out here in the top of the fifth. That's Yank foul down the right field line. So the count remains two and two. Lennis struck out five and walked three here in the top of the fifth. And has yielded only three hits. He pops him up. Ramirez makes the call and catch two way. I see that, uh, Pete, that you're mechanically inclined like I am when your TV set or monitor goes off. You use the very well known bang method. Yes. <laughs> Smack it on the side. It, it works every time. Johnny Ray takes down low. It worked. It worked. You know, the good thing about that method, you can use it for many different appliances. Yes, it works on uh, electric razors, toasters, radios. <laughs> <laughs> I use it a lot on the car radio and stereo. <laughs> good smack. Get it back. Fouled off. And the count one and one. Craig McMurtry joins Jeff Devin in the Braves bullpen. Mack may be getting in some throwing, or he may be... He might get in the game as a relief pitcher because Bobby Wine's gone back to a four-man rotation, and McMurtry was the odd man out. and one. That will retire the side as Obi camps under the pop-up. One, two, three inning for Len Barker. Ernie and Skip will come on over in just a moment. At the end of four and a half innings of play, the score the Braves five and the Pirates nothing. to the bottom of the fifth already. Bob Horner will lead it off for Atlanta. Braves on top, 5 nothing. Ernie Johnson, Skip Carey with you now as we go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Horner is struck out and Homer it is. 22nd of the year, driving home his 75th run. So he has a shot at 100 RBIs on the year. If he gets himself into another hot streak here and it appears that he is. Cecilio Guante ready to go to work. Check swing. They ask for help from first base umpire Dave Pallone. But the pitch is ruled outside. One ball, no strikes. Point 
corner Harper Obergfell here in the bottom of the fifth. 2-0 and oh is the count. Corner sixth on the Braves' all-time homer list. Murphy fourth. I'll bet you know who's first. Three balls, no strikes to Horner. Fastball right through there. It's three and one. Deadman has taken a seat. Now just McMurtry throwing in the Atlanta bullpen. Pop foul back this way. The fans down below battle for the souvenir. And the count is full. Three and two. Guante again ready. He knew it. A fastball down the middle. Horner took it. So he strikes out for the second time tonight. Here's Terry Harper. He has bounced to short. Singled and scored. We're with you from Chicago tomorrow. I guess we're on at 205. The game is at 220. We'll have an exciting pregame show. Who gets Thursday, Friday, and Sunday? Who gets tomorrow's duty? Pete Van Weer. Oh, and one the count. Pop fouled back and out of play into, well, not quite to the upper deck. He can throw hard, can Guante. Ernie and I were talking earlier on radio, and we haven't had a chance to do it yet, to just figure out an all-Dominican Republic team all-star team. Well, I bet that would be an impressive club. A little pop. Short right field. Ray on the run. Good catch. Johnny Ray deprived Harper of a soft single. Two out for Ken Obergfell. It's a nice play by Johnny Ray. You know that club would have guys like Guerrero and Andujar and Soto and Tony Pena, Ramirez, Ramirez, Mariano Duncan, and George Bell of Toronto. Slashed foul back 0-1. I'm really not. Guante is from the Dominican. You really have to check out the Red Book in the American League to see how many of their outstanding performers are Dominicans. From Raphael's hometown, uh, San Pedro de of course, I'm sure that's really close. That got him in the shoulder. Obergfell is hit by a pitch ball. He's not too thrilled with that as he starts down the first baseline. There are so many players from Rafi's hometown, including Pedro Guerrero. They've got about eight or nine in the major leagues right now. Fastball. Got him on the right arm. I'm going to try San Pedro de Marco Reese. Okay. That's probably correct. I would doubt that, too. <laughs> we'll have to find out. I'll bet our associate director, Kenny Nolan, knows. I'm wrong again. Here's Hubbard. We have a squadron of producers out here tonight. Maybe one of them can find out the correct pronunciation for us. keep them from falling all over one another in the track. A little roller to second should end the inning. And it does. No hits, no runs, no errors, a runner left. At the end of five, Braves lead it. 
five nothing and in a moment you'll see who's coming up next for the Pirates. We go to the sixth inning and you see Craig McMurtry is on to pitch for Atlanta. Barker went five allowed three hits three walks struck out five and pitch shut out baseball a very encouraging outing for him. So McMurtry is on to face the heart of the pirate order Madlock Thompson and Brown. Five nothing Atlanta is our score. Madlock one for two. He singled and bounced to third. Ernie Johnson, Skip Carey, with you from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. One ball, no strikes. Rafi unloads in a hurry. Horner can't come up. And the Braves get a break as it hits the railing. Now, wait a minute. They're going to say it hit one of the Braves players sitting on the top step there. And as a result, they will allow Madlock to go to second base. It'll be an error all the way on Ramirez. I think Ramirez had enough time if he uh, braced himself. He might have felt that Madlock was getting down there too quickly. Threw on the run and the throw was low. A tough ball for a Horner to handle because it was a long hop. These short hops they handle easily. I'd like to see what it hit over by the dugout. Whether it looked like it bounced off the railing, but I guess not. No argument. I think you were right first time. Probably hit one of the players sitting. That means it would have been in otherwise. Two balls, no strikes. The count to Jason Thompson. The two one here it is way outside it's three and one. Oberkfell gives chase but he'll have no chance it's well back in the seats. Always oh, seen some great catches here tonight. Another one. That's number three, I believe. McMurtry was going to be a starter in these last 40 games. Uh, Bobby Wines decided to go with a four-man rotation, so Max pitching long relief, but he can still make some points with some steady pitching in the in this uh, near the end of the season here when it's so important to... You can almost make the ball club in August and September if you pitch well. Make the ball club for next year. Although that is the one very difficult thing about the Atlanta situation right now. When you have an interim manager, mm -hmm. you might impress him, but he might not be there. Thompson is called out on strikes. There's the first out of the inning. But the numbers are there, too. Though. Well, that's right. Yeah. And Max Numbers could use some help. Yep. There's several ball clubs that like him. We talked to enough scouts yeah. to know that uh, who they like and who impresses them. And uh, on one of McMurtry's outings, American League scout said, hey, I'll take him in a minute. Into the dirt. Good play by Benedict. One ball, no strength. you got to remember, he won 15 games just two years ago yeah. as a rookie. Got to recapture that. He's going through the same thing Lee Tunnel is going through. He had a big year a couple of years back. 11 and 6, I think he was. And now the victories have eluded him. Won last year, won this. And that's in there. One and one. 
Cardinals and Reds will. Well, they're just getting underway in Cincinnati. We're in the sixth inning in Atlanta. Here's a curveball that uh, McMurtry has been working on in Richmond, and uh, it's better. It's better than when he went down there. One and two to Brown. Curve hit hard. Oberkfell stays with it. Looks the runner back and throws him out. Horner stayed. Oh, they're going to say missed the back. Now Horner storms a Dave Pallone. Here comes Bobby White. Bruce Benedict upset as well. We'll look at it again. It looked like he stayed on there, but maybe not. Well, let's look. Throw had him beaten. It's on there, isn't it? Sure looks like it. Maybe looks like this his, angle. Looks like his toe is still hanging on the corner of the bag. And he makes an effort to keep it there. Oh, he looked like he was on there. He's on. He invented that call. Even even pushed his foot back a little bit to make sure. Boy, Horner's furious. You don't see him get that upset. And here's Tony Pena. It's an error on Obergfell. It was he didn't make a perfect throw, but he didn't deserve an error in that spot. Fouled off the body of Pena at home plate. It's 0-1. Two errors in the inning, and the Pirates have runners at first and second with one out. You're not supposed to assume outs just because a throw gets across the diamond, but you're not supposed to invent calls either, are you? No. Must be right in position, right on top of it. Pena has flied to right and doubled. And then got embarrassed and picked off third base. Curve into the dirt, evens it up at one and one. A ball and a strike. Activity in the Pirate bullpen again. Jim Wynn up and throw it. Good breaking ball fouled off at the plate. Pena never gets cheated, boy. He gets some swings up there. He's walked only 24 times and 424 at bats, and three of those were intentional. Yeah, you really got to be wild uh, to walk Pena. He just loves to hit bad balls and makes them difficult to pitch to because you really don't know where to throw the ball if you're a bad ball hitter. He hung that curveball, but Pena bounced it foul down the third base set. Oh, Yogi Berra is one of the greatest bad ball hitters, and they used to just go over him and say, well, throw down the middle. What the heck? He, he lit the ball over his head just as well. This is good as if it's in the middle. Well, we talked about it last night. I don't know if it was on radio or TV. You'd think that catchers would never swing at bad pitches. They see so many from that area, but... Pena and Bear are a couple great examples. He had stepped out of the batter's box prior to the pitch, says Bob Engel. So it's still one and two. Rafi's going to talk it over with McMurtry. You've got to move out of the batter's box before the pitcher makes any move toward home plate. And uh, I think Ramirez might have spotted something out here. He might feel that uh, that Madlock at second base, he's been around a long time, might be stealing the signs from Benedict and flashing a, a sign to Pena, so they're probably going to change him right now. Or if they don't change him, they talk long enough yeah. to make Madlock think that they did. Yeah. Look, if we can pick him up up here once in a while, you know the guy down there second can pick him up.
The one two. He chased the terrible pitch and stayed alive. Still a ball and two strikes. There's a good example of thou shalt not pass. Anywhere near the strike zone, Pena's going after it. Oh, he's got all kinds of wristbands and batting gloves. All kinds of good things. I think he's a lieutenant colonel. All that makes. <laughs> no one, two. Struck him out with another good breaking ball. So McMurtry has struck out two. He's so far pitched around the two airs. Look how far outside this is. But he went after it. Here's Denny Gonzalez, who has walked and struck out. I wonder how a runner at second base can signal the batter what pitch is coming if he picks the sign. Very simple way. They have it. Before the game starts, they, they have this agreement or understanding that if I pick the sign up at second base, I'll flash it to you. And if I walk, this is one way they could do it. If I walk off straight from second, it's a fastball. If I bend over a little bit in my lead from second base, it's going to be a curveball. And some hitters, if you try to do that, try to help them like that, will pinch your head right off. They yeah. don't, they don't want to know. Or they're afraid that you're going to be wrong, and they're looking for a curveball, and there's a fastball right at their coconut. Mm -hmm. Three and one, a walk would load them up. We used to go over that often because we had a couple of third base coaches. Billy Herman was one, Connie Ryan another, that could really steal signs from the pitcher and the catcher. Joe Adcock would just love to get the sign. He'd hit the ball 10 miles. We had other players that didn't want it. The first run of the night should score. Let's see. Murph falls down. His throw is weak, and Madlock can score. It's 5-1. to one. It's an unearned run, but it counts nonetheless. And Sammy Khalifa is the batter, the Pirate shortstop. Gonzalez drives in his sixth run of the year. His first hit in the series. Khalifa has struck out and walked. There's the story. A very sloppy game. Very slow one to this point. We're past the two-hour mark. And we're still on the top of the sixth. Leo Mazzoni is out to talk to the pitcher. He's one of the Braves pitching coaches. First time we've seen Leo move the dugout during the game, I believe. Mm -hmm. Zaheem McMurtry and yeah. Benedict visit. Yeah, there'll be no change. Mazzoni just talking with them, and uh, Forster gets up. Deadman starts throwing. And Khalifa ready to stand in there. Minnesota beat the Blue Jays today 6-5 to move their lead to four and a half. Good play, McMurtry. That ball was hit hard. And the inning is over, and Horner steps on the bag about four times to get a message across to Dave Pallone. Pirates get an unearned run on one hit, two airs, and a couple of runners were left. We go to the bottom half of the sixth inning. It's 5-1 Atlanta. Tonight, Warren Oates stars in Dixie Dynamite. That'll be right after the game, right here on TBS. Want to know the plot line of this particular movie? Two women wreak havoc on a town when their moonshiner father is killed. I don't blame them. Christopher George, Jane Ann Johnstone, and Kathy McHaley are the stars. And it says here on our promo sheet, this is a real classic. And I'm sure that it is. Well, you go to the bottom of the sixth, and Bruce Benedict 
will lead it out. I always like to watch Jane Ann Johnstone movies. Don't you, Ken? Benedict has walked and doubled in two. That's foul, 0 and 1. Ernie Johnson, Skip Carey with you from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Delta will get us to Chicago after the game where the Braves open against the Cubbies at Wrigley Field tomorrow afternoon. First to four in Chicago. Ball and a strike to Benedict. They're underway in Cincinnati. The Cardinals had red scoreless after one. Red Sox lead Cleveland 1-0 after an inning in American League play. Baseball people tell you the Red Sox are going to clean house after the season, make a lot of personnel moves. Lined again, but hooking foul. He just missed another double. Benedict hitting the ball as well as he has all year long in the last couple of nights. Two balls, two strikes to count. Ed and Jerry Keaton looking in in Columbus, Mississippi tonight. Big Braves fans. We appreciate them watching. Ron Creamer is here from Columbia, South Carolina. Randy and Cheryl Todd honeymooning here. They're from Dothan, Alabama. Full count on Benedict. Rod Scurry begins to work in the Pirate pen, and the 3-2 pitch is on the way to Benedict. Swung fly ball right center. Let's see who wants it. Brown calls for it. One away. And McMurtry bats for the first time. Group from the First Methodist Church from Noonan, Georgia, here at the ballpark. There's Mr. Scurry. McMurtry stands in there. Mack is 0 for 8 on the year. He likes to try to beat out a bunt every now and then, a la Pasquale Perez. By the way, when I was on the field tonight, Perez was throwing in the bullpen, and I just stopped and watched. If there's anything wrong with his arm, I don't know what it could be. He looked great. And I learned from Bobby Wine something that I didn't know, Ernie. I don't know if you did or not, but Bruce Souter has had a little arm tenderness the last few days and has... Pretty quiet, wasn't it? I didn't know about him. Strike at the knees to McMurtry. It's one and two. But there haven't been any situations where Bruce would be used. He's used uh, primarily with a with a lead in the eighth or ninth inning. They say he's okay now, but he had been. McMurtry is out of there as expected. I just quote what was in the paper. Bobby Wine is uh, pretty straightforward with what he says. He said, uh, if Pasquale's ready to pitch, okay. Just go on out there and pitch, but don't tell me your arm hurts in the third inning. I mean, he's just wide open about it. Because we've wondered from time to time, Pasquale looked okay, then his arm hurt, then it didn't. He doesn't want him to be out there if it hurts. Well, he's not going to be back on the roster till after the roster can expand, which is what, the first? First of September. Just three days down the road. Line foul. The ball boy didn't do his job. No. <laughs> and he'll hear about it, too. He was guarding the catcher. <laughs> and it got by. That's Ortiz, Junior Ortiz. He's all right. I think that ball got him right in his wallet. Yeah. There are a few of those around. Wallets. Oh, yeah. The 0-2. The 0-2 pitch. Look out. Breaking ball in on him. Did that hit him? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. So Thompson limps down to first base. I don't know if he's really hurting or not. Pena wanted it low, but not quite that low. 
Thompson at first. Here's Ramirez. He got his front foot out of the way okay, but they got him on his the instep of his left foot. There's Ramirez. Rafi one for three. Sharp play hit. Johnny Ray digs it out, and the inning is history. No hits, no runs, no errors. A runner left. We've completed six, and the Braves enjoy a lead of four runs. All the restaurateurs in town are girding up. They yes, know sir. that they're going to be in tall cotton. Put the ravioli out. There's Lee Mazzilli. Tom will do talk shows, eat, plug his book, eat, manage the game, and eat while he's here. And while he's doing that, he's seven and a half in front. That's right. He's done a heck of a job, yes, boy. Sir. This game is history, folks, right? Now as Horner takes the grounder. And the Pirates go quietly in the top half of the ninth. And a nice pitching job by Craig McMurtry and Len Barker. Final score, Atlanta 6, Pittsburgh 1. Back with the totals after this message. Braves win at 6-1. Skip has the total. Okay, Ernie, for Atlanta, 6-10 and 2. They left 9. For the Pirates, 1-4 and 3. They left 8. Len Barker, the winner, 2 and 6. Lee Tunnel, the loser, 1 and 9. Craig McMurtry, the save, is first of the year. No game-winning RBI. 5,187 saw the Braves sweep the Pirates. We ask you to stay tuned for Warren Oates in Dixie Dynamite. Our next telecast will be tomorrow afternoon at 2.05 from Chicago. Steve Trout goes against Rick Mailer. Mailer shooting for his 17th win. Till tomorrow, for Skip Carey, Pete Van Weird, and John Sterling, Ernie Johnson from Atlanta, Fulton County Stadium on this winning night. So long, everybody.